Thank you, Pat. Uh, good morning, everybody. Okay. So uh, the state has gone through an energy bust. Price declines have been as severe as what we saw in the 1980s, yet no recession in Texas. So the economy has proven to be quite resilient. What I'm going to do today is give you an update on where we are and what we expect going forward. So Texas grew at a pretty healthy clip in the past five years. And last year, despite the decline in prices, we saw a 3.6% increase in um, employment. That was about 412,000 jobs last year. But we started seeing the impact of the oil price decline this year, and our growth has slowed. Through July, and this is the latest data we have, um, we grew about a 1.3% annualized rate and added only 91,000 jobs. Now, um, of course, in addition to oil prices, low oil prices, the strong dollar is another culprit. And um, the outlook is somewhat cloudy. We don't expect uh, growth to accelerate this year. In fact, our forecast for the year is 1.3% going forward. Um, so that would amount to about um, 150,000 jobs for the year. Texas grows faster than the US. Here, you're looking at that data since 2010, but this is true even if you go back 30 years. So what this is is quarter over quarter change, the blue for Texas and the red is uh, the US. And this year, though, for the first time in a long while, our uh, growth fell short of the nations. In the first quarter, we only grew about half a percent, and then 1.4 in the second. Um, the third quarter, which is July, is the first uh, month of that third quarter. It sort of came in with a bang. And if you ask me why, I cannot tell you. Um, although I'll show you some of the, uh, some of the uh, numbers. 3.7% growth in July. That was about 40,000 jobs added just in July, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then the tech, uh, for, for the US, that's August and uh, July together, 1.8%. So we did grow faster. Now the uh, August numbers are gonna come out today, so we'll see what they look like. So up until July, though, it was a tale of two economies. Basically, it was the goods service, goods, goods producing se sector versus the service producing sector. And you can see that in that chart. The blue, this is month over month growth um, annualized. And the blue is total Texas non-farm. The red is good, goods producing. And the green is the service producing. And you can see that for five months in a row, that goods producing sector lost jobs. We actually lost about 51,000 jobs this year while the service sector was doing pretty okay, 2.6% growth and added about 113,000 jobs. So the clump at the very end to your uh, right is the July data, and you can see that um, goods producing sector actually came back um, and grew actually faster than uh, the service produced sector in July. So where did the growth come from? Well. Here you're seeing a, a little bit more granular data. It didn't come from energy, although energy losses did dampen. So here you're seeing again quarter over quarter growth. These are the different sectors in the economy, the main sectors in the economy. Every bar is uh, one quarter growth. And that um, hashed one is July, which sort of stands for the third quarter. It's been made quarterly, so you can compare the numbers. and. Um, you see that actually construction sector was pretty strong in July at the beginning of the third quarter. We added about 4,700 jobs in um, construction. And then the manufacturing sector, which had been declining for the first part of the year, also added jobs, about 1,600 jobs. Um, for the construction sector, uh, we think it's sort of construction playing catch up. Um, the wet weather really, really delayed a lot of projects in construction um, this year. So playing catch up in July, it may not uh, last, it may peter out. For the manufacturing sector, a lot of those jobs were in non-durable goods, but we also saw some in machinery, in computers, and in electronics. And you have to sort of remember that 25% of manufacturing employment is related to export. The service sector continued to expand, and you see um, that professional business services, education and health, leisure and hospitality all grew. The fastest growing was leisure and hospitality, and that's restaurants and hotels 
And we think maybe this has something to do with the low gasoline prices and people have some more money to spend than they're eating out. Um, the next fastest was leisure, uh, sorry, it was education and health, but it was actually health. It grew about 5%, added 40,000 jobs. And increased insurance coverage, I think, has increased the demand for um, health care and added jobs in this sector. The thing to remember is these are from mid-July. So since mid-July, oil prices have fallen, the dollar has strengthened, and we've had news of China slowing. So such robust growth is probably not sustainable going forward. Looking at the cities, um, well, I should actually say something else. Sorry, go back. Um, the unemployment rate for Texas held steady at 4.2%. So that's still pretty low unemployment. It hasn't gone up because the workers that have been laid off from the energy industry have either left the labor force or have left the, the, the state. So um, we haven't seen an increase in um, the unemployment rate. Firms are still reporting worker shortages, in, um, especially for specialty skills like electrical and software engineering, for diesel mechanics, for um, welders, and we're even seeing some uh, low-skill personnel shortages, such as in machinery and food manufacturing. So this is all from our contacts. Okay, looking at the metro, some cities are doing better than others. Um, Midland and Odessa I put here because they were really the fastest growing cities in Texas in 2014, 8% growth, but now um, they've actually lost jobs, about 3,700 jobs um, for the year this year. Um, Houston, of course, Houston is a center for energy and a lot of energy uh, manufacturing, energy related manufacturing, and that has lost jobs. Um, through June, although it, added, it came back up a little bit in July, so for the year now it's, it's flat. In contrast um, to these two, Austin and Dallas are really doing very well. Um, in Dallas, it's really the relocation of Toyota, State Farm, Liberty Mutual into Dallas, so there's a lot of uh, uh, relocations into Dallas, a lot of construction. Austin, you know, the second quarter, well, there was a lot of high tech, but it, overall, if you look at the whole year, it's service sector behind the growth. It's mainly professional and business services, about 9,500 jobs here. Leisure and hospi hospitality, again, that's the restaurants and hotels, 7,900 jobs, and education and health. Austin added about 24,000 jobs this year, so that's pretty good growth. Um, now, so the um, Texas housing market is still doing quite okay. I'm not going to go into that, but where you see the effect of the low oil price is in the office market. And here, um, you see vacancy rates in, in the four largest metros of the state. And um, vacancies have continued to fall in Dallas and in San Antonio. And Austin is quite flat, but you can see the Houston vacancy rates going up. And that's um, office market in Houston is very, is quite weak. Now, um, I did say that Texas exports have been relatively weak this year. They fell actually slightly in July um, and are down about 8% year over year. And this decline reflects two factors, weaker global demand and the stronger dollar. So the pie chart shows you where we send our exports. And so our largest trading partner is Mexico, about 37%, then 10% for Canada, 11% for the European Union, 15% for Asia, 16% for Latin America, and about 5% for China. And most of our trading partners' economies are quite uh, weak. Mexico has been slow. Canada and several of the Latin American countries are in recession. Um, Europe is getting better, but China is slowing. So um, that is not helping our exports. The strength of the dollar isn't helping either. The red line there is the Texas trade-weighted value of the dollar. And what that is, is the value of the dollar against the currencies of the countries that we trade with, and it's weighted uh, with the share of our trade with them. And you see that um, you know, the dollar's appreciation hurts our exports. Our exports um, started declining as the dollar appreciated. And our contacts are telling us that dollar appreciation is hurting capital equipment industry in general, and high tech in particular, uh, PC and communication infrastructure demand from China has been quite weak, is what we hear. Well, of course, looking at the energy sector, um, oil prices at 45 have put a real damper on, um, on energy activity in Texas. 
the rig count, total Texas rig count started falling last November and fell about 60% and stands at about 366 right now, down from 906. Um, we don't have September data for the Permian and Eagleford. You see the rig counts there. Uh, they started falling in, in, um, in uh, November also. But in August, well, you see that the Eagleford rigs have been declining. That decline sort of flattened out a little bit. In Permian, in the Permian, um, rig count started going up in May when prices went up to about $60. And what our contacts are telling us is that they have really stopped drilling in the tier two, tier three um, properties, but they are drilling in the tier one properties that are the most productive. And another silver lining here is, of course, as drilling activity slowed, costs have come down. So that helps uh, the, the productive producers. You see in blue that Texas uh, oil production, that hit its max in um, March. It was $3.64 million has, I mean, what am I talking about, million barrels per day, <laughs> and has declined since then. Uh, the latest data that we have is from June, and that's about 3.4 um, million barrels, a decline of about 200,000 uh, barrels per day since March. And, um, uh, Almost there. <laughs> Last slide. Um, and what you see here's illustrating the impact of declining energy activity. Here you're seeing continued um, claims by industry. These are insurance on these are unemployment claims by industry. And the pie shows you um, the share by industry. The mining sector, which is about 10% of claims, has accounted for 50%, more than 50% of the growth in, in claims since December. So this is showing you the impact of the oil and gas uh, layoffs. And you have to remember that oil and gas is only about 2% of employment. So this is a huge share for the oil industry. And uh, the good news is that they've turned down. OK, so I'm going to finish up. Um, plunge in oil prices has slowed growth in Texas as I said, 1.3% year to date. July came in very strong, but that growth may not be sustained. As I said, oil prices have declined since then, dollar has strengthened, and uh, these two factors plus weak growth in China, um, Japan, Canada, Latin America, these are headwinds for us. And I think for oil prices, the risks are still on the downside. There's Iran coming into the market next year. China is slowing, and even though U.S. output has started to fall, there's a lot of supply in the market out there. Uh, the tailwind is the healthy U.S. economy. It's showing relatively healthy growth. And as I said, we expect 1.3% for the year, so we're not expecting an acceleration. Uh, this is slower than our long-run average, but it is positive growth. And so weak growth, but no recession. So thank you.